Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So, recently I was catching up on the Transformed Wife's blog, which is something we haven't spoken about in a long, long time, but used to be kind of like one of the original bits of content on my channel. Anyway, catching up on her blog and I figured she can't really get much worse, right? She does a lot of shaming of anyone who wants a different life to her and she's very much one of these people who's like, my life is the only way to live. And she's not aware of the fact that other people have different hopes and dreams to others. They have different needs, they have different values, different things make people happy. She's just completely oblivious to all this. And she's done a lot of, you know, catty stuff in the past. She's constantly tweeting out like three times a day why she's better than everyone else and why everyone else is going to hell and what everyone else is doing wrong, you know. But never before has she quite been this dangerous. She has now come out with a blog post that's just like full on, essentially rape apology, basically titled, don't advertise what you're not willing to give, which basically means, kids, you're asking for it if you get raped. Lovely, wonderful. And so today I figured we would have a read of this blog post, talk about it, since so it's just unscripted, unplanned. We're just gonna have a little bit of a rant and a chat. So Laurie Alexander, the transformed wife, uh, you may have seen me talk about her in other videos. If not, I will link some down in the description below that you can go and read. She writes, recently I shared an experience I had when I was 15 years old ju and just turned 16. The summer that I was 15 years old, I went to the beach with a guy my age. He was tall and handsome. I had a major crush on him. My mum wouldn't let me date until I was 16 years old, so she was the one taking us to the beach. At the beach, I wore a tiny bikini. He saw me in what looked like a bra and underwear all summer long. I didn't understand about men's visual nature then. Well, I did kind of know, since I received a lot of attention in my bikini from guys. It's a power trip to have men ogle us. Don't let them tell you otherwise in order to put all the blame on men. Ah yes, if a man is looking at you, it's entirely your fault and not the man doing the looking. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, no. I don't know about anyone else, but I don't get up, like on a power trip when I wear a bikini. Normally if I wear a bikini, it's because I'm somewhere warm and that's the most appropriate thing for the weather. I have like whole days sometimes that like when, when the sun's really bright and it's warm, where I'll go and sit out on my balcony when no one can see me and I will sit in a bikini in a sun lounger and read and paint and do artwork because that's what's appropriate for the weather. That's what's warm, that's what I'm comfortable in. There's no power trip because there's no one there to see me. Stop pretending that there is. Stop pretending that women dress for other people all the time when sometimes we just dress for ourselves and that's absolutely okay. Especially like when you're a child as well. She's like 15 here, she's a teenager. It's not her fault other people, especially if they're grown men, look at her inappropriately. That's on the grown men to not do that, to not sexualize a child. Stop with the victim blaming. When I turned 16, he picked me up in his parents' big old station wagon. He drove me to the drive-in theater. Once the movie began, he climbed on top of me, began kissing me and trying to take my clothes off. So he assaults her, and yet Laurie is still somehow gonna turn this all around so it's the victim's fault. Even though she herself is the victim here, she's gonna blame herself and that's not okay. It is never the victim's fault if they're assaulted. Even Kyra agrees, she's snorting in the background. I demanded he take me home then and he did. Good. We never spoke again after that even though we had a class together. Good. I was always told that guys just want one thing, which is an absolute ridiculous myth and lie that we shouldn't be telling anyone, especially not teenagers and kids. Men are generally well-rounded human beings like everyone else. If you reduce them to just, oh, they have a lot of sexual urges and can't control it, like, that's a problem in itself. Because one, you're not getting them to take responsibility when they are inappropriate. And two, the ones who are decent human beings who can control themselves and who have other interests and are different people, or, or maybe they're asexual, or maybe any of these other things. You're just kind of belittling them and ignoring them, pretending they don't exist, or I don't know. It, uh... It's not fair on them basically, is it? I was always told guys just want one thing. I thought the same of him, but I was advertising to him my body all summer long in immodest clothing. You're not advertising your body because you're not a commodity. I was advertising something I had no intention of giving to him, but he didn't know that. Guys are turned on when they see scantily clad women. This is why whores dress the way they do. Oh, Laurie, you can't say this. They're advertising something they want to give for money. Okay, so she's clearly talking about sex workers here and she's saying 
Sex workers dress immodestly because they're advertising their body to men. Okay, maybe some of them do. There's also plenty that don't dress immodestly. There's also plenty who cover up or who wear different things or wear nothing at all. There's, there's lots of in between. There's not just black and white. There's, there's many things. And regardless of whether a sex worker is choosing to commodify their body or not, the things to remember that are important are one, it's their choice, and two, just because they do show it or they do sell it, can we, can we put it like that? Y you know what I'm trying to say, if they do do sex work for money, just because they do these things, it doesn't revoke their right to consent to sex. It's like, I think this is something that people like Laurie, who are really judgmental, forget, is that even when you are a sex worker, you still need to give consent. That doesn't give anyone a right to your body to just take it whenever they want, for whatever reason they want. You're still completely in control. When you have someone who is selling a product or a service, they still have the right to revoke that thing they're offering at any time before the sale is complete and the transaction is completed. D do you know what I mean? So if, if I go and get my nails done, right, and halfway through the nail technician says, I'm sorry, I don't think I can do this, I need to stop right here, I'm not going to sit there and force her to finish doing my nails for me. That's not appropriate. Obviously, it wouldn't be okay for her to charge me for work she hadn't done, but the point is she can still stop at any point. If a person decides to sell their car and they advertise it online and they put it up there and they get some inquiries, they still don't actually have to go through with any sales. They can still turn around and keep their car if they want. Just like if you're a sex worker, you can advertise certain things, but you can still revoke consent at any time. You can still stop the transaction at any any time. You can still say, no, I don't want to do this because you're still in charge of your body. A few weeks ago was the first time I had realised what I had done to him. I did this with my other two boyfriends in high school too. I wore bikinis and short, tight clothing around them. You didn't make anyone assault you. No one makes anyone assault you. The entire blame is on the people assaulting, not the victims. People can be assaulted when they're wearing anything or nothing. It's not the fault of the victim, ever. Of course, we're in the bikinis and shorts and tight clothing. Um, of course, this is going to make it hard on them to not have sex with me. I see plenty of half-naked men on the street walking around without their tops on, and I don't try and have sex with all of them. You're a human being, you're a person, take some personal responsibility. Don't assault or harass people, it's not that difficult. I was absolutely f responsible for dressing the way that I did. True, you were responsible for dressing the way you did, but you're not responsible for other people's reactions to that at all. This is why God commands young women to be discreet and shamefaced. Ridiculous. God knows how men's minds work. He created them. We'd well, think if he created them, he'd have created them with a little more self-control and self-discipline to not harass and assault other people. For all these female Bible teachers and preachers to say otherwise is a lie. They act like women can dress any way they want. If guys come on to them, it's all the guy's fault. It is. Don't advertise what you're not willing to give. This is so ridiculous. Just because you show a bit of skin, that doesn't give people a right to touch you. If I wear my hair down, that doesn't give someone the right to come along and chop it off. If I wear a crop top that shows my tummy, that doesn't give someone permission to come along and steal all my organs. Just like if I show a bit of skin, that doesn't give someone the right to come along and try and touch me. No, this doesn't support a rape culture, except yes, it absolutely does. None of the guys I was with ever tried to rape me. And yet she said, he climbed on top of me, began kissing me, and trying to take my clothes off. I demanded he take me home then. That sounds like sexual assault to me, Laurie. It really does. Yes, they tried to make out with me and I was constantly trying to push them away, but I now see my responsibility in all of it. Okay, this is good, this is good. Any man who rapes a woman is completely responsible for this wicked act, no matter how she is dressed. Yes, excellent. So why can't you see this is the same for all sexual assault? Sexual assault is sexual assault. It doesn't matter if a penis actually enters the vagina or not. If you're dressing sexually and guys are coming on to you, you are getting what you are advertising. I'm not advertising anything because I'm not a product, I'm a human being. Women at the beaches these days wear bathing suits that entice men. Most of their butts and breasts are showing. The bathing suit leaves nothing to the imagination. It's hard on men. It's hard on men, women, when you dress like this. They were created to enjoy the female body, Stop denying this, accept it, 
and do something about it. Dress modestly as God commands. He wants us to dress modestly and shamefaced for a reason. Shamefaced means not wanting to draw attention to ourselves. Immodest clothing draws attention to ourselves. It's for our protection. It makes it easier for the men around us to not lust. Stop advertising what you don't want to give. All of God's commands to us are for our good. So ridiculous. So despite her literally saying this doesn't support rape culture, this absolutely supports rape culture. You're victim blaming, you're saying that these women deserve it, you're saying that they're asking for it. This is a really disgusting and harmful narrative and it's not something she should be spreading around to anyone. And I've kind of like been thinking recently because originally I was going to do a video on some of her tweets that she's put out recently because there's some ridiculous ones. And it kind of gets me thinking about like, because I was reading some of this stuff and I'm like, how is she still allowed to post this stuff on Twitter? How has she not been deplatformed? At what point is it okay to say I think someone should be deplatformed? Because obviously freedom of speech is so important, but if they're actively harming people and they're spreading harmful messages, should they be allowed to continue? But then again, who gets to decide what's harmful and what isn't? And so really who gets a say on what people can say and post and so on? It's a it's difficult and it's complicated and I don't have all the answers at all. More recently she's been posting all this stuff about how women shouldn't get an education, how women um, shouldn't be allowed to choose whether they have abortions or not, how rights need to be taken away from women, how women shouldn't go travelling either, should just stay home and get married and how marriage is the be all and end all and it's the only goal you should have in life. Um, what else has she been tweeting? Here we go. Women claim that feminism gives women the choice. Any movement that gives women the choice to slaughter their unborn babies is a wicked movement. Wake up to truth, you have been lied to. Love having babies. I know, babe, I know. Here, most Christian women don't want to submit to their husbands in obedience to God, so they listen to false female teachers who pervert their teaching uh, to mean that submission simply means husbands serve their wives, meet their needs, and he must be perfect for them to submit to him. She just literally sits on Twitter all day and like shouts like a petulant child about Oh, she's lying, he's lying, he's your husband, do this, say no to college, say no to education, don't do this, true femininity is this, damn, actually she never says damn, but she's like, no feminism, no feminism, no none of it, none of it. What do you think? I agree. I also just got your nose in my mouth and it was quite disgusting, but I love you anyway. I know, I know. Right, this one's getting ready to go out. But basically, I just needed a little bit of a rant today because people like Laurie Alexander spread the most dangerous messages. And while I'll always say on my channel that I'll never judge another person's individual life, I'll never come on here and tell you that Laurie shouldn't be doing this with her life. Laurie shouldn't live this way. Laurie shouldn't have this husband, kid, whatever. Like, I'll never speak about her life and say she shouldn't be doing something because if she's happy, great. But it's the messages she spreads to other people that are so dangerous. She is supporting rape culture. She is victim blaming. She is telling young people really, really dangerous information that will harm them, maybe physically, definitely psychologically. And that's not okay. And she seems to forget that what feminists want, what egalitarians want, it doesn't matter what word you wanna use, what most people want is for everyone to have freedom of choice and freedom of opportunity and freedom to do what is right for them. We're not saying women shouldn't have kids, women shouldn't be mothers, women shouldn't get married, blah blah blah. We're simply saying women need to have the choice to do what's right for them. They can't be restricted if they wanna go down one path or another. And that's something that is so often forgotten with people like Laurie. But anyway, I just wanted to do a quick video, a quick little rant for you. Um, but for now, I'm going to go take this little pickle out. You're going to say bye, baby. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Here's your cute one. Can get me with the toilet, yeah? Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. All right. But for now, thank you for watching. Thank you for me and the little Kooby bear. You little Kooby bear. Yes, you. You little Kooby bear. Mm, love you. But for now, don't forget to go follow me on Instagram if you want to keep up with everything that is going on in my life and things that I'm doing. You can also support me on Patreon or send me a one-off donation via PayPal if you would like to support my channel because videos like this often get demonetized and people who can help support my work help me keep making videos for you guys and keep a roof over mine and the little one's head, don't you? Yes. Alternatively, you can check out my print store where I sell um, photography prints and handmade art prints and hand-typed 
poetry print thingies as well. I do lots of cool artsy stuff over there. You can also just go check out my work, have a look for yourself if that's what you're interested in. But for now, I'm gonna go see if this little one, because she's a little bit stressed, aren't you? A little bit stressed. And we're gonna go out. Are we gonna go out? Yeah, we are. All right, but thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon.